and going for it. The defuse is already happening. He caught, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the Hello everybody, welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As always, every story is time marked down below in the description for your convenience. Hope you guys all enjoy today's big stories. The first one being, apparently Anomaly has revealed his face to a fan. I'm gonna give, show you guys the picture on screen. This picture was actually on the Reddit forums and only online for about 35 minutes before Reddit moderators took it down for an apparent, unapparent reason. Now I actually did DM Anomaly on Twitter. He did not confirm to me whether this is actually true or not. So this could be a prank, but as of right now, we do think that it was actually Anomaly's face which was revealed. Now how I imagine the situation went down is somewhere in public the guy or the kid who actually took the picture I, I admit it's probably a fan who took the picture maybe he recognized Pop Anomaly a very very familiar face there or maybe he recognized a very iconic voice of Anomaly itself and ran into them and actually took the picture so as of right now we do believe that's actually Anomaly and his face a very very normal looking guy as opposed to many people out there who think we were going to reveal some freakishly looking dude um, because you know he's always wearing masks and such and so forth or maybe this is actually a prank maybe I'm the idiot here the only one who's going to post a video about this on my 15,000 views per video channel and no one's going to care but Anomaly wanted me to post this just for the fact that it's a joke and I'm the only guy who thinks and is stupid enough to think that, that that's Anomaly. So that could be true as well but I'm pretty sure that is actually Anomaly's face reveal so that's pretty cool. You know it's kind of cool to know he's just a normal looking guy but he can be that kind of funny and that weird as well on top of that. So now all we need is McSkillet to reveal his face and we'll have everyone in the CSGO community that we actually want to see revealed. Now on top of that I do want to actually give you guys more important updates on Counter-Strike Classic Offensive. I've been talking to the owners of that. You guys probably remember all the videos, the montage of videos from Anomaly, from uh, Three Click Phil, from Sparkles, all the guys out there, the top YouTubers in the CSGO scene covering CSCO, Counter-Strike Classic Offensive four to five months ago, and then shortly afterwards, about two months after that, uh, you know, barrage of uh, you know, views and actual members on that community. I think they have almost 70,000 fans or people in their actual group or their Steam group, which I'll link down below for all of you guys. They actually got greenlit on Steam, and that means the game will be coming to Steam sometime in the future. As of right now, we have no timeline. I talked to owners and management close to the Counter-Strike Classic Offensive. Thank you to Daik for reaching out to me uh, on, the, on the side to speak for Counter-Strike Classic Offensive. As of right now, my updates for you guys, I cannot give you a timeline. It seems they actually want the hype to die out a little bit. They want people to kind of, you know, not expect too much from the game. It's a busy four to five man group. This whole entire game of CSCO is being worked on by four to five people. Most of them are actually full-time students and full-time workers with jobs on the side, but they are steadily progressing to actually, you know, release this game as soon as possible for all of you guys who are still hyped about it. So they want the hype to die down a little bit. They don't want to raise your guys' expectations like many games out there do. They build up your expectations. You expect a deadline to be then. They miss it and then you get really let down. So trust me, guys, this team is working hard every single day to get closer and closer to release date for Counter-Strike Classic Offensive. As of right now, a big goal of theirs was to be maybe at the end of the Operation Hydra. Once that operation can, can uh, actually concludes, they want to release it sometime soon around them, but that deadline is certainly not set in stone. So thank you to Counter-Strike Classic Offensive and all the guys over there who contacted me. I do appreciate the information. So for all of you who are looking forward to that game, trust me, they are working hard to release it as soon as possible. Now also tonight, at the point of you guys watching this video, at, at the actual upload time of this video, in about five hours time, we will have the Clash for Cash. That is E-League, the return of the Clash for Cash, a single best of three. <laughs> it's just a ridiculous series when you think about it. Virtus Pro, Astralis, of course, the rerun of E-League Season 2 Championship Grand Finale there. It's a single best of three between Astralis and Virtus Pro. For this on screen, $250,000 cash. An unbelievable sum of money. It goes to show you guys how much E-League really makes when they can give away 250 k for just one, probably around three hour match. So that will be tonight. Unfortunately enough though, it's going to be around 4 a.m. for all of you European fans out there. So really poor timing. And even here in America, it's going to be around 10 p.m. So again, not really the best timing, but you have to work around the European minor and so on and so forth. So that will be going on tonight, guys. And look out for that. Who's going to win your $250,000 cash? I wish it was me. And also, in even bigger news, we had a lot of drama going on in the ESL Pro League Finals. Many of you guys do remember a couple weekends ago, we actually had North versus G2 in that grand finale. It didn't end up being, though. It was a G2 super team. It took them down 3-1 to one in that series. But there was a lot of drama beforehand. Actually, it started off with Shox and Kenny S and their interviews. I'll show you guys quick clips of those guys right now. Uh, I think we kind of have all the same uh, opinion about this. Is uh, the they are really arrogant uh, in their attitude and we just don't like that. Uh, we really want to face North uh, because they are really cocky and uh, we want to show them that uh, winning an event doesn't mean anything against CS. Ooh. 
All right. And then Config from the north side, he stepped in and said some things. He actually dropped the F-bomb live on air multiple times, but here's a quick clip of one of the times. He had two separate interviews. He came back several times saying the F-bomb and really hyping up the crowd in a good way, but still it was kind of going back and forth between G2. So here's what Convict had to say after that. Good luck, Kenny. I'll fuck you up. Oh. Whoa. And then even NBK stepped in. Even the guy you think is the friendliest looking mother fricker on earth, he steps in and also says this quick clip. And I think that they're not the same team as they are as SK is. And so in a best of five, we have a pretty good map where we're very confident into this matchup. Okay, so we were right. MBK is like the nicest guy ever because that's the worst that he said. So that's actually not that bad, but it continues. And then just later, earlier today, actually a few hours before this video was released, we had Cajun B on Twitter. He took to Twitter and said this. It seemed like Shox was going after the entire North squad and then Cajun B went out and said, oh, hey, if you're going to you know, talk this way and you're, talk and you're being fake to us, I don't want to talk to you on land ever again. And then Shox did reply and say, hey, pretty much to sum it up for all of you guys, he didn't mean to call out the entire team. He just didn't want to call out individual players on that North lineup. So he actually said, Cajun B, you're not one of those guys that was, you know, acting like personality-wise. The other guys were, you know, having a really bad personality. Shocks, one of those notorious players for talking trash in the past and, draw and saying some things that maybe shouldn't be said. But I do still love this drama, and it was so fun to see. I think, apparently, though, Shocks and the, and the whole G2 drama situation has to do mainly with Config, and I would believe Magis Boy are the two that talk the most, especially Config on that side. I think those are probably his two least favorite players that he actually was talking about. But I seriously, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Do you guys like this drama? Now, to a certain point, during the ESL Pro League Finals, when both these teams were in the grand finale, it was great drama. It was it was freaking great to see these guys go back and forth, interview after interview, uh, you know, highlight after highlight, going back and talking trash to each other. But now, it's it's a couple weeks later, maybe it should actually stop, and maybe, you know, let's calm down, guys. What do you guys think, though? I like, I personally like the hype. I like having someone who's so in entwined and so emotional about the game, they actually can ha have some drama go back and forth. So that did happen just earlier today. Hopefully, the G2 North situation does die down, but it is currently still going on. And very lastly, today's episode of CSK News, I do have European minor updates for all of you, which will be spoilers. So if you guys have not seen the matches yet, I'm going to give those away right now. First of which, it was Team Big. Now remember, the four teams we are now down to, three of these teams will make your major qualifier. So four teams did move on out of the eight teams so far, one of them being Team Big. They went 2-0, beating Fnatic Academy as well as Team Kingwin. Fnatic Academy, also known as Team Ballistics, but not really important there. It was Team Big who went through your first team through. They were joined by Penta, who also went 2-0. They took down iGame and Team Dignitas. Then it was Envious, your third team through, barely surviving Kingwin in a best of three. I really feel bad for Kingwin in this setting. Although they placed seventh and eighth place on the score sheet, they were definitely one of your better teams here, competing very closely with Team Envious, but it was Envy who overtook them in the best of three, two to one. Now again, two very close maps there, but it was Envious going through. And your last team through to only beat one team is actually Dignitas, who beat LDLC in their first matchup and then faced off against them and once again in a best of three. And it was Dignitas who actually beat them in a very, very close series going to Mat 3 overtime. 19 to 17, Dignitas takes that series and they go on to your top four. And again, three of those four teams will move on to our major qualifier. Dignitas has only beat one other team there so far. So I'm going to have them being the team out. And I really do believe right now we'll be big Penta and Envious moving on, which really wouldn't be too big of a surprise, but we'll see what happens. So hope you guys all enjoy. I am sorry though for the delay of this today's episode. I actually have to go render this video and I have to go to a meeting for a family planner I just found out about. So hope you guys all enjoy the later upload. Hope you guys, if you want to, leave a comment down below. As always, thank you all so much for the great support on my OP Skins affiliate code. Live, love, laugh, lot. Remember, I like you. I will see you guys all tomorrow. And if I don't, I will see you the day after that. So remember, I like you. Goodbye. They gotta move quick right now. They're going for it. The defuse is already happening. Hiko, are you kidding me? He's gonna go for it. They win the